So we are here with J. Elvis Weinstein from uh, Cinematic Titanic and Mystery Science Theater 3000 fame. Thank you for joining us. So, uh, glad to be here. It is Weinstein, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. No problem. <laughs> I should have learned from that Family Guy episode. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're starting out by talking about how all of you got involved with both Mystery Science Theater 3000 and then ultimately Cinematic Titanic. Um, what got you involved with them and what made you decide to continue on to Cinematic Titanic and you know, all that kind of stuff? Um, well, uh, initially Mystery Science Theater, I was a, uh, a stand-up comic in Minneapolis um, along with Trace Beaulieu and uh, Joel Hodgson. Um, and we had all worked together, and, and Joel and I had worked together, and act, I had actually taken a class that Joel, hmm. when I was 15, I guess, when Joel came back to stand up from his self-imposed uh, hiatus, he started teaching his class, and that's right around when I was starting to do stand up, um, and took a class from him, and so we became friends through that. A couple of years later, a bunch of stand-ups in Minneapolis did a writing group once a week. Uh, that involved Trace and I and a few of our friends, and Joel joined that group eventually. Um, and then just one day after the group, uh, he pulled uh, Trace and I aside and said, hey, I'm doing this TV show tomorrow. We're doing this <laughs> pilot. Do you want to come down? And there's some puppets in it. And he didn't really know what he was doing, but he, he was ready to shoot it. And so Trace and I got wow. brought in, and we went in, and... Trace became Crow, and I became Servo and Gypsy, and wow. uh, we started the the show on KTMA in uh, Minnesota. I mean, so obviously you guys go back, um, and was it just your friendship that led you to continue on to Cinemac Titanic, or was it that you wanted to perform live, or what exactly? Was uh, it no, I mean there was there was lots of years in there. I uh, I left the show early. I had I had conflicts with with more than one person. Um, and left the show after the first year on Comedy Central uh, and moved out to Los Angeles when I was 20. Wow. Um, and then in, I guess, late 07, um, Joel, Joel, who, who, Trace and Joel and I had, had become close friends again once they had both moved to Los Angeles and we had talked through our pasts and, uh, <laughs> um, and uh, it was during the writer's strike in 07, and Joel and I had lunch, and he said, hey, I'm, I'm wanting to get the gang back together, essentially, and do you want to do it? And I wasn't working because I was on strike, and I said, uh. absolutely, sure, what the hell? And so we shot an episode of Cinematic Titanic, and uh, it got really nice response um, online and people buying it. and. And so we decided to continue, and we have ever since for about almost three years now. And uh, what's the difference that you feel in uh, the atmosphere of doing Cinematic Titanic live compared to filming in a studio with Mystery Science Theater? Um, it is, uh, I mean, it's, I think because we were all stand-up comics to begin with, um, I think it brings out the best in us. You know, I think doing live shows really makes us feel the most alive and I think gets the most energy out of us and gets the most collaboration out of us on stage, you know, because we are more comics than actors, really. And being in a studio, you know, regardless of the situation, you kind of feel like an actor. And there's not that feedback and there isn't the energy of an audience to make you feel like the joke, you know. Both the joke that you told is funny and the one that you're about to tell better be funny because you want to get a laugh, you know. Um, obviously, you have a very extensive history in film, I mean, beyond just Mystery Science Theater 3000. Um, are there any upcoming projects that you have that we might want to keep our eyes out for? Anything you'd like to highlight that uh, you've been connected uh, with? There's not a lot. I mean, I've been really involved in, in, the, whole mystery, in the whole Cinematic Titanic mm -hmm. process. I do a lot of our production work in LA and I, I do a lot of our arranging of shows and um, so I've been really deeply involved in doing it. Um, I always have other little stuff going on but it's it's hard to 
pegged when anything will happen. Right. You know, I had a movie that just got optioned not long ago, but wow. or a script that just got optioned. Whether it'll become a movie, right. yeah. who knows? You know, so I don't. So really if want anyone it. out there has money and is looking for a That's project right. to fund, <laughs> <laughs> make that happen. <laughs> and uh, you were also involved in one of our other favorite shows, which is Freaks and Geeks. So. Yes, I was a writer and producer on that show. Uh, do you have any uh, favorite memories from working on that? Uh, the whole show was it was just really fun to do. It was uh, it was a great example of of you know how TV really can come out good if you have just a ton of people who are really talented and really care about what they're doing. You know, it doesn't always work out that way in TV, but yeah. uh, it was one of those cases where it was just really, even though it didn't, it wasn't a success by TV standards. I think creatively, we all felt it was a big success. Well, I and mean, we were all really proud of what was coming out the end of the the shoot, you know. I think pretty much anyone who sees it now really regards it highly. But what is it like, you know, to look back on it? You know, back then it wasn't really successful, but now it's like a huge sort of cult hit. People have come to l learn that, about it and come back to it. And oh, it's so great it. to live in the age of DVD and downstream media, you know, because people are still still discovering it. You know, I was at lunch today with Gruber. Who played Mr. Rosso on the yeah, series and yeah. who's, uh, who opens for us on the road? And so, and the waiter recognized him. Was talking about how he had just bought the DVD set for his girlfriend and how they were getting into it. So, you know, and we were all everyone on the show was because it was such a critical success. We, you know, we were all sort of treated as if it were a successful mm. show, despite the fact that we didn't even get a full season in. Right. You know, but it's I mean it's it's huge now. It's almost like you look back on it and it's. One of those cornerstones of so many people's like, like back like histories, like mine. I know I grew up right when that was on, and it was so important. It's one of those shows that sort of uh, like Daria or My So-Called Life that was so semin seminal in the seminal, 90s. Um, yeah. um, and also, could you talk about the cast? The cast of it was so amazing that you got all these people before they're massive. Yeah, stars. and I think I mean if if you look at Judd Apatow and his list of skills, being a good judge of talent is certainly one of them. He's, uh, I mean, they worked really hard to cast that show, and they they went all over the country, and even they got Seth Rogen out of Vancouver yeah. and a couple other people out of Vancouver, and it was just they knew that. They, it had to have specificity. They knew that these kids had to be real, mm. uh, which was ultimately sort of our downfall with the network because yeah. they weren't all pretty kids and right. they weren't all winning big victories each week. But you know, our whole point was to, you know, to to show the gut wrenching things of that age and to play it as real. You know, mm -hmm. and even though, you know, it's a kid's. You know, it was from a kid's perspective, which is. These things, while they may be funny to the viewer, when they're happening to you, your sense of perspective says this right. is the biggest thing. And those kids are just all so great. And obviously, almost all of them have uh, gone on to right. massive, success, big things. Yeah. yeah. And they deserve it. They were great. And it was really fun to write for them. You know? Oh, yeah. One quick thing that we forgot to do last time. Where can people find more information out about Cinematic Titanic? Like if it's coming into a town where they might be? Uh, they can always check at cinematictitanic.com. Uh, we try to keep uh, the uh, upcoming dates section uh, current, and uh, and we keep adding more and more. So we hopefully will come to a town near you yeah. very soon. Check them out if they do. Please do. Thanks.